Netoma. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, who is Salvador? Well, um, Salvador is a, an open book. My life is out there. Um, there's nothing uh, new, nothing old, nothing special. It's just me. I'm a father, uh, a husband, uh, a businessman, an entrepreneur. Uh, but I'm a, most importantly, what brings food to the table? I'm a comedian. All right. Salvador, from reading your biography, I understand you are an engineer by profession. Yes. Uh, how do you cross over from being an engineer to a comedian? Uh, life, life was very interesting because I really, 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 really wanted to become an engineer. That one, there was no doubt. I wanted to become an engineer because at home, growing up, I would, I would, uh, I would break things. Yeah, like a radio, I would open, I liked unscrewing. Then putting the things together was a problem. So that earned me some good beatings. So one time my dad got fed up and he told me, listen, if you ever want to learn how to fix these things, you have to become an engineer. This was when I was in primary. So growing up, I had that thing that I have to become an engineer so that I learn how to fix the radio or the TV whenever I open it. And it was no surprise that in my A-level, I did PEM. I did PEM uh, Fine Arts. Uh, and then I managed to uh, get enough points to take me to Makerere University. I actually got Chambogo uh, to do education on government sponsorship to teach physics and math. But uh, me, imagine me a teacher. <laughs> it would have been a problem. But uh, they advertised telecom engineering. I, the points were not enough for Chambogo because the cutoff points for Chambogo was really, really, really high. And they needed about like 12 students. So Makere University advertised, we were actually the pioneers, the 2004-2008 year, we were the pioneers of telecom engineering in Makere University. And it was all private sponsorship uh, because it was a new course. So I applied, went through and uh, managed to, to score myself a, a good ba a Bachelor of Science degree. Uh, it was a second upper and uh, I was fortunate that in my third year, when we were doing internship, uh, I qualified to, we did an exam, yeah, MTN was looking for interns, so they brought an exam and I was in the top 10, so they took us to, to work in MTN, to train actually, but I didn't go to train, yeah, I went to work, to the extent that after a month, they considered hiring me, after the second month, I was basically hired. Because they asked me about my time, I said, I'm, I'm going to my fourth year, and uh, I have lectures up to midday, I'm only available after 2 p.m. Because to move, I would commute from home, so to move from Akerere to Chiswa was quite a distance, so I needed about two hours. So they said, no problem, you can work between two and six. I said, hey. So I signed a temporary contract as a temporary staff, I was earning like a good 500k tax-free. Okay. Uh, and I managed to pay for myself my tuition uh, for the whole of fourth year because I was I was not paying rent, I was not doing what, I was sleeping at, at my museum's place, so I had some money on me, some money. So yeah, uh, I worked in MTN uh, from 2007 before I finished. When I finished uh, my my degree like this, I was made a, a permanent staff, uh, and you know when you're permanent, you have those. Uh, uh privileges a car free phone uh a sim card which is on post paid there were so many things that that the benefits that came with that but my job was i was a fixed line switch engineer uh we would sit we first sat in boya for those who know the switch in boya yes yes yeah we sat there and then later we moved to now what is called design hub that was we called it casement's office that was where um, we moved as a, an office and we left the switch for just uh, the machines because we would work in the machines and the temperature would be as low as 15 degrees so that the machines uh, don't overheat yes. us. So it was really, you would see everyone walking out of the switch with jackets, yet outside the temperature is 30 degrees. But when you go inside, so when it came to... Uh, about my third year in 2011, I resigned in 2011 when the comedy had picked up. But in 2009, I fell in love with, with comedy. I used to watch Theatre Factory a lot. 
and I tried to join them when I was still in my I was still in uh, campus, yes. but it did not work out. So I loved comedy so much, and uh, I used to follow it a lot, especially on DSTV. Uh, there was a competition called Stand Up Uganda, Stand Up Zambia. So I followed Stand Up Zambia with a passion, to the extent that when it was advertised that they are going to do the Ugandan edition, I was like, okay. So I applied for it in 2009. Uh, we went through the auditions. Things were okay. I got support. We went through the competition from 20 to top 12 to top 8 to top 4 to top 3. Wow. I was um, just, Salvador, just before you continue, yes. what was this feeling of you switching, you know, having that intention of switching from engineering to yeah. comedy because many people out there struggle with what they call talent and passion uh, on top of their careers yes. professionally yes. and many parents african parents yes. do not look at passion and talent as a thing to go in yeah. for for their children so how was it for you how easy was it for you to switch as we we talk about how you went into the competition as well but uh, it wasn't that very difficult because my job as an engineer was well programmed I was reading from the manual. You wake up, you check the systems, if there are any alarms, you clear them, and all that. So it became boring. So unless there was a, there was a, a crisis, hmm? unless there was a crisis, we would, not, we would not enjoy. You understand? You would not enjoy your work because you are doing the same routine stuff. So it became boring. And then when I joined comedy, I realized that every time you step on stage, you have to have new material. I said, hey, now this is the kind of challenge I need. This is the kind of motivation that I need because this, this work is not easy. People may look at us as clowns, but honestly, to look for material every time you step on stage is a challenge and I love the challenges. You understand? So that is, the decision was not very hard moving. And also it came also at the workplace when I was denied a promotion. And uh, the reason the boss gave was because he saw my future in comedy becoming bigger. So they did not give me the promotion. So in other words, they had decided for me what to do. In other words, your boss had visioned that Salvador was going to be a great comedian, right? Yes. Just look at this one. My boss had seen. I don't know whether he saw it in a good way or, <laughs> to Zalao or something. <laughs> But his decision made my decision very, 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 very easy. I realized that, you know what, I don't think I am going to, let me do something which I'm going to love, which I am in control of, which I can, I can, I can be able to maneuver, other than working for somebody who is not going to, I felt unappreciated. So the decision to leave engineering was very easy for me. So that was how many, after how many years? That was after two years in comedy. Okay. But I don't count 2009, because that was when I was, Breaking through. Breaking through. I didn't even break through. That was when I discovered that I, I could do comedy. Uh, my breakthrough year was uh, 2010. 2010. 2010 was my breakthrough year. That is when the name Salvador became a hit. Okay, so back to the competition that you participated in and you, you know, you emerged in the top three. Yes. What Shall happened? Second. Second. Yes. Who are the other participants? Uh, in the top four, we had uh, Pablo, who won it eventually, myself, Daniel Omara, and Emmanuel Sebachije. Okay. In the top four. Okay. In the top eight, the four of us, there was a guy called Ken Mulalu. There was uh, a guy called Chizito Makanga. There was uh, Mendo Museveni. Okay. Yeah, there was Mendo Museveni, and there was some other guy. Some other guy. Uh, there was a comedian there. Okay, but, so in 2010, yes. you now get started on a serious journey of yes. comedy. In 2010, I, uh, I, I, I formed a group. Uh, uh, we came together with Alex Mohanji, Daniel Omara, and Pablo to form a group. Okay. The name, the name Crackers, if you've ever heard some years back, Crackers. Yes. With yes. ones who are doing mic check, one, two, one, two. Actually, the, crack, the name Crackers came from Daniel Omara. Uh, Omara was the brains behind our, 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 our uh, swag. Okay. So Daniel Omara uh, was in charge of uh, the flow of the show. 
Alex Muhanji was in charge of production. He was the one who would make for us Bulango in case we needed any technical stuff because he used to work for Fenon by that time. Uh, my work, because now I had an office, it was easy for me to print things, eh, to write proposals, so to get some money also because I had the job. So uh, the finances kept, then the, the first of the show was supposed to be Pablo. For us, we were supposed to write on his image. Until uh, he came and told us, ah, I cannot be performing in bars because of my religious beliefs. So we stayed three. We were like, together, Malako to Tia. But guys were like, you know what? We are comedians. You understand? We can do this with or without Pablo. Pablo. So our first night without Pablo was a huge success. The second, so the night kept on growing bigger and bigger. But uh, the performance, we used to charge, we were paid uh, by a beer. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> Salvador, we need to talk about this. Your first payment Papa, was a crate of beer. Are you joking yes. about this? No, I'm not. was a crate of beer. Because we were not charging entrance. Yeah? We were not charging entrance fees. So, at the end of the night, uh, the, the, who were we to have a crate of beer in Ifendis at that time? It was swag for you to have crates because beer was... Uh, it was quite expensive. Yeah, and the friend is was a and thing it, it, by it, then. It was trending. Yes. So for you to have a corner, we had the VIP, we had VIP treatment, we would eat food on the house, we would have drinks on the house. It was so nice until we realized this thing is not gonna help us. So we started adding the money element to it. We are now charging 5k, but from 5k you get a, 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 a drink. A drink, yes. yes. So the 5k was basically telling people you need to buy something to support the business. So from there, uh, the owner, say the owner of the place, Meli, is one of our guys, uh, the guys who really, really, really helped shape us. Um, he told us he would give us some money for transport at least. The first amount we made as a group of 10, 250,000. Each of us was getting 25K. So the, 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 uh, the group kept on growing. And then we started even charging highly now. We started charging from 5, we went to 10. From 10, we went to 20. Yeah? So the venue became smaller. We had to change. We shifted to Theatre La Bonita. And slowly by slowly, kept on growing. Okay, so within that transition, Salvador, um, there is something that is always on people's minds. Mm. Your commitment to your talent. Yes. Because I want to imagine back in your school days, did you ever do things that revealed that you know you had this talent within? Do you remember doing any special things that now when you hack back in times, you remember you're like, oh, in my senior you know days, I used to do this. Do yeah. you remember certain things you did that revealed this? Definitely. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, entertainment prefect uh, in my in oh, both O and A level. I was entertainment prefect, and uh, I was good at drama, acting. So I think that shaped my confidence on stage because I used not to fear talking in public. You know, public speech was came very, very easy for me. Yeah, because of I think that training. And I used to do funny, funny things. I used to act like a clown, like in my in my in my uh holidays. Yeah, I would act like a clown. I would dance Lingala, I was very good at dancing Lingala, make at the way it doesn't even allow me to do five moves. Um in fact I think one of my most vivid memories was uh in in 1999 i was in i was in s2 and we went to silver springs hotel by then musicians had a mashup at silver springs that's the first time i met bobby wine master parrot uh, viboyo eh? and then Strucker. by then Strucker was called pamela she was the mc of the session so during their break when musicians were resting i would go and dance lingala and they would give me some money, right? From the swimming pool, you'd go, that's... So, but when he called me and said, ah, dude, you, are, you have talent. By then he was a young man, he was a few years older than me. But he had swag, he had his swag, it was really nice. He kept on saying, ah, you man, you, you have some talent. I said, eh, this guy, he was, he had some good swag by then. We were, they had a collab with uh, Master Parrot. Okay. They used to be a duo. Uh, but I think that is what shaped me, gave me the confidence, yeah? to be uh, on stage, to speak my mind, to do what I feel I can do. 
So looking back here, yeah, I think those few few things which I didn't know that were shaping me for today, uh, those few few things I did were were really very instrumental. Awesome. So Salvador, you break out. You know, you've been to Effendi's. You now head into La Bonita. Uh, first forward, I know you did quite a number of things. Yeah. Now. Before we start talking about the Africa Laughs journey, mm. because I know this is season five. Season five. Yes. Before we start talking about the Africa Laughs, how did you manage to break the industry? Because I understand you started then having shows that were going outside Uganda. Yes. So how did that happen? And who actually was the first person to spot you that hosted you outside Uganda? The first person to spot me uh, was uh, Mess. Masembe, and he took me to Kenya. My first ever international show was in Kenya, Nairobi. But I performed for Ugandans because it was Independence Day for Ugandan independence. So I performed for the High Commission in Kenya, Ugandan High Commission in Kenya. So like 80% of the audience were Ugandans. That means my material had to be majorly Ugandan based. So I didn't feel the show. Because there was no big difference between performing in Kampala and in Nairobi for an audience which is strictly Luganda. So it's strictly Uganda. So one time I was hosting Bebe Cool's concert at Cayenne. And fortunately there was a promoter. Uh, that was 2013. There was a promoter, a Nigerian promoter who liked looking for talent. So he was in Uganda to look for talent. He had come to meet Pablo because Pablo did this show in 2012 and I heard about the show I think this was 2012. Yeah. So what happens is this guy gets a kachik, you know those wichiks, yeah? Yes, yes. And then asks, by the way, tell me who do you think is the biggest comedian in Uganda besides Pablo? Then the girl said, I will never forget the girl. Her name was Ivy. Ivy was like my friend. There is a guy called Salvador. In fact, he is the MC tonight. Just watch him. I had not yet started performing. So when I started performing, the guy realized I was speaking English. My jokes were not, eh, not the usual one he, has, he had heard of. I was making fun of people randomly out of my head. The guy said, hey, this guy seems to be okay. So he calls me and says, uh, Salvador, uh, my name is Mr. Opa Will Williams. I had heard of that, that, that name. That's the guy who took Pablo to Nairobi. I said, Mr. Opa Williams, it's an honor to meet you. He said, ah, I've liked what you're doing. Can you do shows on a bigger scale? I told him, sir, just give me an opportunity. Then the man was there. He asked me, so how much do you charge? Ah! In my head, I was now looking at $500, $300, because that's the amount he was giving me. I said, no, it depends on your budget. What budget do you have? The man said, I'll give you $1,000. I said, yeah, we are on. So, the show that opened me to the international market was uh, that show I did in Kenya for over 5,000 people. It was at the Bomas. And I performed twice because he wanted us to perform twice, twice.